Hi, Tom Andreas. Thanks for coming back and watching the next segment on video two. And I want to kind of start by showing you exactly where it is that we're going. And so I'm going to work with you to help you understand how we can create the square vector, uh, how we can create the stars, how we can create the different shapes, and how we use text, and how then we can align text on arcs and on circles. So that's kind of an overview of where we're headed. Okay, so let's have some fun. We're going to start a file and we're going to uh, make this particular plaque 12 inches by 12 inches square. And it is 3 quarters of an inch thick. We do want the XY origin in the 0, 0, 0 position and we are ready to work. So let's start by setting up the margins and we definitely want to have a 1 inch margin around this so, uh, so that we have room for our profile bit. And so we'll set those at one inch all the way around. That's going to help us with a whole bunch of different stuff. And then we can go ahead and create a square around here. And that is in perfect position now. So I'll close it and pick up the square tool once more. And we will do a radius internal of one inch. And I really like this particular one. And uh, so I've got to reset this. I'm not quite sure why it always does that, but um, it needs to be reset at one inch. And that's going to give us just a little bit of room uh, around our edge to, to work with. And so at this point, we can go ahead and, and there's a couple of ways that we can do this. Um, we can grab it and move this whole uh, this whole set of vectors and you can kind of see that that's going to be kind of a cool looking plaque but uh, what I want to do is go ahead and use a margin again just to get you used to to using the margins um, let's go out in here and make it two tenths of an inch in and then we'll come right in here do the same thing and so now we're in really good position so if we take this vector and we stretch it so that it fits right against each of these margins or guidelines, we can just nail that exactly where it needs to be with a lot of precision. And so at this point, um, what we can do is let's go ahead and pop the stars in right here. So we'll pick up the star tool. And there's some pretty cool functionality in the star tool. I'm just going to hit create for just a moment. And um, if you look at the star tool, you'll see that um, it's not quite exactly right. And sometimes you have to work with this outer radius. Uh, so that, um, or the inner radius, excuse me, so the inner radius will set uh, whether the star is uh, fat or whether it is thin. And so um, what I want to do here, we're going to pick this one up again and delete it and let's work with this star. And we will reset this inner radius so that these lines are straight across. We want a perfect star. If we if we wanted this star a little bit different, where it was a thinner star, it looks like that. With the if we reset these outer, the outer, excuse me, the inner radius percentage, it changes it so it looks like a fatter star. We want to get it so it's just precise. That's so not quite right. We'll keep going down. There's 36, maybe I come to 37, maybe 38, and it looks like it's perfect. So I'm going to hit apply and close. And at this point, we can leave this star. And what I'm going to do is, is um, uh, we're, we need to put the star up in this corner. And so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to control C and then control V. And I want my own, oops, I want my own star so that I can work with it. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn the star so it's going to fit in the corner. And I kind of want to draw a mental line right straight across through to this point so I can get it right. And that looks like it's just about maybe too much. We'll get that star positioned correctly. And then we can take that star and make it smaller. 
and get it so that it fits in there perfect. And we would want about the same distance through here as we would have here. So we're pretty close. Now I'm going to show you something I think you'll like. If you pick this star and hit Control C and Control V, then you can take this star and you can rotate it over this way. And you can position it here. Then if we, if we pick this star and hold the Shift key, which remember is the AND key, and so we say, hey computer, uh, you see this star, and using the Shift key, this star, we're going to Control C and V that, and then we'll flip that copy over, and then reposition that copy where it belongs, and everything should be just right. So that's pretty quick and cool. So at this point, you can kind of see that we've moved pretty quickly uh, into position so that we can put this uh, star um, as it belongs. Let's check just to make sure with a second click and we can see here that it's not exactly in the center of the workpiece. A couple of different ways to do it, uh, to, to, to fix that and that is that you can center it in material on um, horizontal and vertical you can center it horizontally and you can center it vertically. Now we need to center it vertically so I'll click and there it is centered vertically. So now we can put the two circles in I showed you earlier that it will surround and accent this star. That's one. I, oops, I hit the click twice. I'll control Z that. And then I will put the second one in so that it will cut about two tenths of an inch um, larger. So I will apply and close. So now we've got that much of it done. So at this point we can go ahead and move on to text and we've got a couple of different text tools here to work with. This is text in a box and this is just straight text for us to work with. So I'm going to pick up a text that we're going to use and I'm going to use, I, I kind of like Playbill. Now you can go to defonts.com and you can download literally just about all the fonts that you can ever imagine. And so um, for me, I have a lot of different fonts. These are a lot of different fun fonts that are on here. We use these as well, um, the, kind of the ornamental flowers, and we'll work with that a little later. But a lot of different types of fonts are what you need. Uh, maybe we'll just use uh, Hollywood for a moment. I kind of like that one. And uh, so for Hollywood, uh, we'll use Shop Class and we will uh, enter that so we'll apply shop class right there and move it up and we're going to assign it to this curve here and then uh, we'll go ahead and oops we've got to click off of it and now we'll enter a new text it's let's do a cap blocks it's fun maybe with an exclamation point and apply and every font has its own little nuances like you can see this little hyphen here doesn't look exactly like uh, the rest of it and, and there are different things that you can do to fix that you can even draw in your own and so but in any case what we're going to do now is we're going to apply these to these different curves and so um, what we'll need to do is to come up with a curve that we can apply the text to and so what I'm going to do is create another one that we're going to apply to. So this will be the guide and I'm going to hit apply and close. And what we're going to do then is we're going to put shop class on top of this line right here. And to do that we pick up the wrap text along a curve tool. And so the first thing we have to do is select both of the uh, entities. The first entity being the text and the second being this line. And so what we need to do then is go ahead and uh, apply that uh, text to the curve. So it says here select a single line of text and the curve to wrap it on. Now we've got that part done. And then it gives us the option of maintaining text size and that's fine or we can scale it. And then the spacing of course is between the letters. And so uh, something that we can do is put it above the curve, on the curve, or below the curve. And then we can slide it to the left, we can put it in the middle, the right, 
and then here it shows that we can align the individual characters to the to the curve or we can have them uh, in the vertical position. So at this point I'm just going to hit apply and let's see what we get. Okay well it looks like it went on the wrong uh, area what we and we kind of want it above the curve but it is it is above this part of the curve and so the issue that we're having is that this particular curve here doesn't know where to start and where to stop and we've got to do something which is to split the curve and so what I'm going to do is go into the node edit mode by right clicking and we're going to take that curve and we are going to um, cut the vector so we're going to make it cut right here then we're going to make it cut right here and so at this point we've got two different vectors and so you can see now that this is not the circle is not connected to the circle here and so uh, what, what we can do now is if I hold the shift key down I've now got the two vectors the vector and the text that I want to work with and I will hit apply and it puts it at least on the top curve so we've got to continue to uh, work with it but there's one problem and that is that the start point on this curve is right here and let me show you what that means so if I select this curve and go to node edit by right clicking the green uh, box indicates the start point and what we want to do is we want the start point to be over here so what we want to do is come down here and select make start point so now we should be able to display our text on our curve properly so I hit escape twice and hold down shift to select the text and at this point I can go back to my text along a curve and hit apply oh and now we've got it in the proper location Okay, so how, but the problem is maybe I might want that um, to, um, to fit and be just maybe a little bit larger. So let's say that we want to set that at 75%. And um, we will go ahead and just leave that at 75% for the moment. And um, let me close this and we'll pick these two vectors now but we should check and make sure that the start point is right here uh, before we do anything so let me go to node edit mode and it is the green start point so it should it should put its fun right along the bottom section here so I'll escape to parachute out of that and hold shift and I will go over now back to or back to our tool and um, let's hit apply okay now um, it's on the wrong side of the curve and so we want to put it below the curve apply and we want to put it at about 75 percent let's see how that looks a little bit finicky let me just apply and see if it's going to work now it's looking like it's a little bit um, still a little bit uh, too large and so we'll have to play with that maybe go down to somewhere around 50 and Perhaps it looks, this is a guess, but it looks like it's pretty close right here uh, to being correct. And so what I can do is um, select out of that and then I will, I like to select and get things out of the way. So I'm going to pick both of these, click it again, and I want to move my guides out of the way. And so at this point I can... Uh, select everything I need by holding the shift key down because I'm going to scale everything and so what I'm going to do then is say okay now if I and if I pick a corner I've got one extra vector there but if I pick a corner of this it keeps the aspect ratio which is the horizontal and vertical ratio as opposed to scaling um, vertically this way so I'm going to control Z to reverse that option I'm going to get rid of this I'll reselect all that and I will put this and I could close this and what I can do is I can center that horizontally and vertically and so now we've got all the correct pieces to go ahead and do our carve so now we can slide over to the carve and we're going to start at zero zero flat depth of point 0.2 again 60 degree bit is correct and I'm going to hit calculate then at this point we can preview toolpath 
and it cuts it precisely as it should cut it. And we can do uh, any variety of other things as well, but I think at this point we are done uh, with this part of the demonstration. So I hope you like that. Uh, go out and have some fun and practice with it. Practice. A lot of times people like to practice by copying quotes off of the internet and selecting their, their, favorite, um, their favorite author. And so that works pretty well to go ahead and just make quotes. So I encourage you to have some fun making quotes and putting borders on those. And uh, stay tuned for video three.